this is my current situation it's a bit of a disaster <laughs> but I'll I'll tidy everything up and then maybe try and make a video explaining what I am up to this is the third in our ongoing Starlink in Africa series. In the first episode, we imported a Starlink kit into South Africa. In the second episode, we mounted a Gen 3 Starlink dish to the roof rack of the vehicle. And now in this episode, we are going to do a 12 volt conversion. So the reason for doing a 12 volt conversion is so that we don't have to um, turn on our inverter every time we want to use the Starlink when we're working off grid. Um, there, there will be a, probably a slight saving, maybe 10-20%, but there's not going to be a massive energy saving because we still do need to convert uh, the 12 volt uh, in the vehicle up to the 57 volts at which the Starlink operates. And that's where this guy comes in handy. So, first we need to look at the power supply that came with the Starlink Gen 3. If you read on the back, it is a 57 volt 1.75 amp converter, AC to DC, and that works out to almost exactly 100 watts. And it outputs to a very standard, um, that's a 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter um, barrel connector. Initially I purchased this 600 watt power supply, it's a boost converter of Amazon, uh, thinking 600 is plenty watts when I only need 100, but it didn't work. It sort of half booted and then kept, kept cutting out. Um, and so I did a bit of reading and it turns out that these things, the, the rated power, the 600 watts, is only achievable if your input and output are very similar voltages. So let's say you're inputting 12 and outputting 14 then you might get close to 600 watts whereas uh, what I was doing I inputting 13 or so outputting 57 couldn't get close to it so I ordered this 1200 watt boost converter of Amazon I think it was about $20 and its input can be from 10 to 60 volts and its output from 12 to 83 volts there's also a slightly chunkier version that's 1500 watts and it has a fan uh, I think I'd rather buy that one actually because I noticed when running this for extended periods that it does get pretty warm but I'll put links to to both of them down below in the description So, the first thing to do is to hook it up to a multimeter so we can set the output voltage. I'm going to attach the probes of the multimeter to the output of the converter and I'm then going to power it up like so. And you'll see I've already set it so it's at 57 volts but it's very unlikely it would be at that when you receive it. So you'll see next to the output over here, there's a very small little potentiometer. You can put a little screwdriver in it and twist it clockwise to increase. There I'm at 58 and anti-clockwise to decrease the voltage of the output. So I'm going to try to get it almost exactly to 57, 56.9. Fifty-seven. There we go. There are two more potentiometers. This one is a, a current limiter and this one is a low voltage cutout. This is quite useful if you wish to protect your battery from being fully discharged. But um, If you don't want to use that, just turn it clockwise a few times and it will lower the low voltage cutout. And similarly with the uh, current limiter, turn it clockwise a few times and it will increase the current limit. Okay, so I'm going to unplug now and disconnect the multimeter there we go here's a cable I made up um, to go from the converter to the router on this end is a 5.5 by 2.1 barrel connector I had to trim this slightly on the trim the corners a little bit and put some heat shrink over just so it fitted into the hole on the router I'm now just going to quickly reattach this by popping the positive and negative are noted on the on the board itself over there and there so make sure you get that correct and then 
I'm going to screw that on there. And this over here. There we go. not mad about all this exposed electronics so I designed and 3d printed a small sort of cover for this unit lots of holes in it for decent airflow and you can see it says in on that side and out on that side and this simply clips onto the board and it's held in quite tight so I'll throw this online and put a link down below if you want to make one for yourself All right, here's a battery. It's identical to my second battery in my vehicle, as well as the battery in my trailer, 108 amp hour lithium, 13 volts. And from the output here, we're gonna connect via an XT60 connector to the converter. And then from the converter, we go into the Starlink router. And from the router out to the dish itself. There we go. While it's booting, the unit can pull, you know, 8.7 amps as it's doing now, but it usually then starts to fluctuate once it's up and running, goes down to three and a half some of the time, up to six or so. But the power converter seems to handle it all very nicely. I left it running indoors for about six hours and it got hot, but not, not so hot that it would burn you when you touch the heat sink. So I think it will be absolutely fine. So this is a relatively simple and very inexpensive way to convert your uh, Gen 3 Starlink to 12 volts. Um, it won't work on the Gen 2 systems at all. Those have built-in power supplies so that it's more complicated to convert them to 12 volts. If you are not electrically inclined, you can buy off-the-shelf solutions. I believe Star Mount Systems and Trio Flat Mount both have um, 12 volt adapters. I will put links to their websites down below. In the next video we will install the power adapter and Starlink in my Land Cruiser and run some tests to see how much power we are actually saving by running off 12 volts DC. See you then.